Hi, my name is Drew Festini, and I wanted to show how I've connected a rotary encoder knob to the BeagleBone Black. Um, and the way in which I'm doing this is I'm actually using hardware that's built into the BeagleBone Black to be able to decode the pulses that are coming out of the rotary encoder knob. So this might look like a, um, a potentiometer or a pop, but the big difference is that this moves in discrete positions. So you can see how it snaps to each detent. So with a rotary encoder knob, we can tell both how much it's moving and also in which direction that it's moving. Um, there's two signals that are coming out of it um, that um, the quadrature encoder that's built into the um, knob is outputting signals on, which allows us to tell that. So this is the PDF um, of the reference guide for the hardware module I was talking about. Now it's called a Enhanced Quadrature Encoder Pulse Module, or EQEP, and this will decode the quadrature um, pulses that are coming out of the rotary encoder knob and automatically give us the, both the position and the direction, um, which is quite nice because we don't have to worry about uh, uh, having to have our software read those pulses, um, which is not very efficient and also not very reliable. So this is the nice graphic from the um, reference manual for the EQEP module. Um, and right here is actually an example of how wheel encoders work. So in addition to something like a rotary encoder knob, another um, common application of quadrature encoders is uh, encoders on wheels, um, of like a robot, for example. So you can tell how much the wheel has moved and also the direction. And the reason why it's called quadrature is actually, if you look at these two signals, A and B, um, they're actually offset by 90 degrees um, and that's what this hardware block is actually decoding to give us both the position and the direction. Um, and if we look here at the breadboard we can see that there's actually uh, those two signals as well. So this one in the middle here, um, the green one is gr goes to ground and then the, the orange is the A channel and the blue is the B channel. So this is the A and this is the B. So that maps to what we're seeing here um, in this graphic. So we're looking at the um, chart for the headers on the beagle bone and I actually have the um, quadrature encoder um, pins from the um, knob hooked up to um, 11 and 12 and then I have the ground hooked up to one on the P8 header. So if we take a look at it here, um, we've got uh, the middle pin on the rotor encoder going to P8 uh, one, which is ground, and then we've got uh, one, one of the ends of the um, rotor encoder, and um, unless you have um, specific direction in mind, it doesn't matter um, uh, which, which way you hook these two up. Um, so I have um, pin 1 on the rotary encoder going to P811 and I have uh, pin 3 on the rotary encoder going to uh, P812. So these are the two pins that we're using here, 11 and 12. So before I continue I wanted to point out that you want to make sure that you're running the uh, latest image, or at least right now, um, currently on July 1st, the latest image is uh, the May 14th image, um, and it's important that you have this um, Debian May 14th image from BeagleBoard.org um, because it has the driver that we're using to read um, the uh, rotary encoder knob. Um, the driver is actually called the TI Equip module and that was written by Nathaniel Lewis. So this is Nathaniel Lewis's um, GitHub account here. He's uh, Technoman117 on GitHub and uh, he has a repository called BeagleBot. And inside of BeagleBot there is a repo in here called Encoders, or I should say directory inside of this repo called Encoders. And this is actually what we're going to be using. So there's full instructions in, to, in here as to um, how it all works. Uh, it's actually a very nicely documented um, uh, GitHub repo. Um, there's also some threads on the Beagle board, a mailing list about this as well, that I used uh, to figure out um, how to, to use all of this. So you'll want to um, 
make sure you're running, like I mentioned, the, um, the latest kernel. In this case, it's the May 13th kernel um, from the May 14th image. Um, and that has the driver that we need um, that Nathaniel Lewis wrote. Um, and then I've um, done a Git clone of his repo there from GitHub onto the BeagleBone. Um, and we have the directories in his repo, including the encoders one, which is what we're interested in. Now, the kernel already has the equip um, uh, driver or kernel module built into it. Um, but we will be using some of the uh, examples from this directory here. So here we're in the um, DTS directory inside of the encoders directory in the BeagleBot repo. Um, inside here is the device tree um, configuration files for the different equip modules. So the TI processor that's in the BeagleBone, the Citara, actually has three um, equip modules. So we could potentially hook up three knobs if we wanted to. Um, three um, quadrature encoders um, we're able to hook up to it um, though we can't use all of them at once if we also want to use HDMI so here I'm using HDMI um, so we're left with having to use um, the equip 2 one uh, or I should say equip 2 uh, mod, um, uh, module and uh, we want to configure the pins for that um, to avoid interfering with HDMI, we actually need to use the Equip2B. Um, so the Equip2 hardware module is actually hooked up to two sets of pins. Uh, the first one here without the B conflicts with HDMI, so we want to make sure we're using the B one there. Um, there is also Equip0, which we can use, but if we use that, we would lose audio for HDMI which for my purposes does not really matter, but I just wanted to show Equip2 here in the example because it's a little bit tricky because you have to make sure to use the B variant of it, um, which is those pins 11 and 12 that I showed earlier. Um, that's what it's hooked up to. So let's take a look inside of this um, device tree configuration file, um, or is it should be technically called is a device tree overlay um, for this uh, hardware module. So here we see the device tree configuration file for the equip2 and this is the alternate or B um, pin numbers for it which does not conflict with um, uh, HDMI or the EMMC. Um, in here we can see under uh, the device tree um, uh, block here for equip2 we can see the pins that it's using. And actually I think I went into the wrong file here. Yes, so as you can see there, it was using different pins than what I've been talking about, um, which do conflict. So if we look at file B here, similar configuration, except here now we're dealing with the um, pins that I was talking about. So um, the equip 2A, the A channel of the um, quadrature encoder, um, is on uh, P812, and the B channel of the quadrature encoder is on P811. Um, the rest of this might look confusing if you're not familiar with um, the device, key, device tree configuration uh, and the pin multiplexing. Um, there's some good tutorials I'll put in the links for this video if you want to learn more about this. But the main thing here is I was able to tell that um, the A channel is on P812 and the B channel is on P811. Um, and we do not use the index or the strobe. Um, so these are the only things that we're concerned about, and that's how I figured out what to hook it up to. Now we don't actually use um, those DTS files, those are the source files. We actually will load the DTBO, which is the device tree overlay, um, and it's in a binary format called a flattened format, and that's actually what the kernel will use. Um, so there's actually a directory inside of DTS called DTBO, um, these are basically where the binary um, configurations. Um, so there's a DTC compiler which takes this and then turns it into the DTBO. Um, now I issued a pull request on GitHub, um, so this may be picked up by the time you watch this, but the um, equip 2B does actually not exist in Nathaniel's repo, in that Technoman uh, 117 repo. Um, so I'll put a link into my file. Um, you can also use the DTC program to just compile it um, from the source. So I'll put that in the notes for this video. So ultimately, the um, bone equip 2 b DTBO file needs to end up in lib firmware because that's where 
um, the kernel will look for it when we go to load um, the device tree um, overlay for the equip2 module. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and it should then uh, load everything up and we'll be ready to read um, the position uh, from the uh, rotary encoder knob. So in order to um, load the overlay um, we echo phone equip2b into the cape manager slots which is in the slash sys file system and this will cause um, that configuration to then be loaded. Uh, the 9 here is actually can change um, depending on different runtime um, uh, variables so the better thing to do is to put an asterisk in there instead of the 9 and then you'll be covered no matter what the number is after the cape manager here so if I go and hit hit enter it should then load the module oh I guess that's a good point here so I need to be root to do this so I'm going to actually leave the Debian user and do this from root so as root I've echoed the bone equip 2b to the cape manager slots and it returned without any errors so if I take a look at dmessage we should see here at the bottom that it did in fact um, load the, the overlay and does not look like there was any errors here so we should be ready to go another quick check we can do is if we cat that file that we just echoed into um, we can see the current uh, capes that are loaded and we can see here that our overlay for the equip 2b has been loaded um, as essentially a virtual cape just like uh, the EMMC, the embedded flash and the HDMI are also uh, virtual capes so to speak. So now that we've loaded the um, driver uh, via the device tree bindings um, in the cape manager we now see if we do a find in sys for equip uh, we see there's a bunch of new files in there um, including what will be of interest to us is the position. So this will co this will hold the current position of the knob um, and there's some other information there as well that I might get into in further videos. So if we count that file um, we will see here that it shows zero because we just loaded the module and we haven't moved the knob yet at all. So let me go ahead and I will move it a couple of positions. And let's take a look at the count and see if that's changed. Okay, so now it shows 16. Now you might be wondering because I only moved it um, a few positions why it's 16. So um, if you look at the data sheet there for the equip, you'll see with the quadrature signal that for every detent that it moves, every time it moves from one detent to the next, it's actually going through four transitions. Um, and that is one of the reasons that it's able to reliably tell that it's been moved and also tell the direction it's moving. So um, there are ways to, um, well, simply we could divide it by four and then we would know every detent that it's been moved. Um, there's a lot more configurability as well in the hardware module, depending on if you have hooked up to a motor or a wheel or um, other sorts of devices. Um, so we can see there it's 16, and if I do this again, after moving at one detent, we'll see that it's 20. Um, so it's a little bit, it might seem a little peculiar, but you can get the exact count with a rotary encoder now like this by dividing the position value uh, by four. We'll, we'll tell you the number of uh, detents that it moved through. So I just wrote a simple, like, one line bash script, which will just uh, keep on echoing out. Um, or catting out the position value and then sleeping for 100 milliseconds. So we're going to see a stream of values. So we can see here it shows 32 because I moved a few times. Now as I twist the knob we're going to see it go up and I'm turning it uh, clockwise right now based on the way I have things set up on my breadboard. Uh, now if I turn it the other direction it's going to interpret that as negative and it's going to count down the position. And If I turn it enough going to start going negative and then increasing in, in the negative magnitude um, as I'm going counterclockwise. And if I start going clockwise again, it will start uh, increasing back towards zero. Um, so that's probably not a very good shot right there, but you can see here as I move it, um, it does change.
So it's quite convenient that you can just cat position in the slash sys file system for this equip to block and uh, get the position, um, but that might become tiresome after a while. Um, so a nicer way is uh, Nathaniel has created an API. Um, so he has a C++ library and a Python module for accessing um, the position and some other aspects of the um, equip module. Um, so we can run this test here, and it's going to do pretty much similar to what um, that bash script was doing, but just um, as, uh, as a Python script. So let's take a look at test.py here. Um, so it's pretty simple syntax here. Um, we just ha import the equip module, and then we do need to tell it the path to um, the equip module that we're working with since there's um, three. Um, and also an absolute. There's also a relative mode, which is useful for um, telling velocity of, e velocity of a wheel or something like that. But right now we're just looking at absolute, which is where it just keeps on counting up or counting on, down, depending on if you're turning it clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, the period, though we don't really care about that since we're in absolute mode. Um, and then just some simple Python here, while true. So it's just going to loop forever. It's going to pull the position. So it's basically going to read that position file and then uh, we're just going to print out the value that it returns. So let's go ahead and run this. So in order for this to work with the equip2 module I did have to change one line in the Python test script um, changing it from uh, this path to this path. I think there might be a cleaner way to do this either by changing the library or looking at the library a little bit more extensively but um, this will work for now for just a, a quick little demo. So if you try and run it with um, dot slash test dot py, you'll notice you'll get an error. The reason for this error is actually permission denied for reading that file because we're our normal Debian user. So what we need to do is actually run it as the um, root user and we can use the sudo command to do that. So now you'll see it's uh, going along there as um, zero. Uh, it, it does. This library does reset the count when you run it. Um, so now if we twist the module, we'll see it reading out the values there. And let me go ahead and make this bigger so we can see it in the now at the same time. So I've increased the size of the uh, font so we should be able to see it as I'm turning it here. Going to keep on going up, turning it clockwise, and then if I start turning it the other way, it's going to start going down. So very similar, very similar to when we were doing the Bash script in catting position. Same thing using the Python API, very similar. Um, but since it's in Python, that allow us to then integrate it into things. One of the things that these knobs are often used for is for um, uh, when you see a knob on a digital device, um, even like a car stereo, I think also has them. You can tell when you feel like the detents, you feel it click in between positions. Um, that typically means you're using a rotary encoder. Um, so hopefully, this, hopefully this was helpful. Um, I'll get into some other applications in the future. Um, another thing that's very useful is you can hook up uh, the wheels on a robot to this module. Um, head teleposition and the speed of the of the wheels. Thanks for watching.